Hi, good morning. Thanks so much for being with me for Marketing Monday. Today, I want to cover how to start a blog. So let's grab our coffees and get started blogging. I hope you're having a great week. I love Mondays, fresh slate, clean, new start to the week. And we're off and running, ready to do all kinds of marketing fun activities. But if you didn't see last week's video on how to start a blog, uh, how to create one, the technical aspect of it, you might want to go back to that video. If you've seen that, or if you've already got it set up on a, a website or a separate platform, fantastic. So a brief recap, uh, starting a blog as a mediator or an arbitrator uh, is a great way for all of us in the resolution industry to share our experience, to build our brand, to build our presence online, and also to improve our writing skills. All good things, right? So we wanna do that. Um, good morning, Rick, how are you? How are things in Austin? Alex, nice to see you. Thanks very much for joining in. Uh, so being mindful of time, uh, and maybe some constraints and technical aspects, but also the importance of keeping your public image professional and positive. Let's talk about blogging. Uh, we did talk last week about a couple of the pros and a couple of the cons. Um, so if you've decided that blogging is going to be good for you and good for your practice, here we go. First of all, before you start blogging, uh, I think that it's really essential to identify your primary target audience. A lot of us have a primary, secondary, or even tertiary target market, but when we're blogging, we really want to concentrate on that primary target market. Um, and this is the same for any kind of content creation. Knowing who exactly you're writing for will help you to tailor the content not only to their interests and their needs by making it useful and relevant, but also by using the psychographics of your target market to make the language appropriate, the tone appropriate, et cetera. Lisa from Charlottesville, Virginia. Hi, how are you? Thanks for joining. All right, next, once you've defined your primary audience, then you need to start choosing topics for your blog posts. A good topic should be informative. It should be tastefully attention grabbing. We don't want to have any kind of clickbait or exaggerated headlines, but it should also be useful and valuable information to your readers. And that's where the importance of identifying your target audience really comes in. Readers will keep reading. They'll keep tuning in and looking forward to future uh, blog posts if you consistently provide them with value. In turn, this helps you maximize the benefits from people reading your blog. So you might want to consider as content, uh, current events, emerging trends, new case law, any specific aspect of your resolution niche. Uh, you could talk about whatever topic you choose though. You want to be sure that it's something you're passionate about and knowledgeable in so that you can really showcase your experience, uh, your expertise, your credibility, and your authority on this particular topic matter. I also generally recommend that you approach with caution um, any any articles that you write. Uh, we have to always remember that we're neutrals, so we can't disclose any you know, details about cases that we've heard or participated in. We can talk about them generally. If that generalization doesn't lead someone to conclude that it was X, Y, or Z party or case, right? Um, at the, on the best side of it, um, you start a conversation. On the worst side of that, though, you could drive away some readers who don't perceive you as being neutral. Um, and that leads to distrust. That's an impact on your professional image. And that's a pretty expensive faux pas. But overall, uh, controversial topics, um, it can be easy to put out an adverse public image. And a lot of the time, that kind of juice really isn't worth the squeeze. You know what I mean? So keep it neutral. Uh, but the next step then in developing content is research. And before you start writing, I think it's really crucial to conduct thorough research. You want to gather all of the relevant information and insights. You may want to consult databases or journals uh, or other authoritative resources. 
and making sure that your post is is accurate, reliable, up to date, right? Uh, remember that from all of our trainings, research is really a great foundation for anything that we do, but it's especially true for posting blogs and writing articles. And it really does help you uh, to provide valuable insights and you know thought leadership, uh, valuable perspectives to your readers. Well, hi, Nikki, dreary Los Angeles. Oh, the June, June gloom. All right, the next point that I wanna make is that once you've gathered all of that necessary research and information, then it's time to start organizing your thoughts and create an outline for your blog post. And an outline really will help you to structure your ideas and ensure that your post flows logically and coherently. And a typical blog post, like every, any other article, needs to contain an introduction, the main body, the conclusion. And the finished product should align um, with all of these things, you know, within varying degrees of closeness, right? The introduction really should capture your reader's attention, provide the background information, state the purpose of your post. The main body should discuss your topic in detail using examples, evidence, case studies, uh, to support your arguments, you can include links, etc. The conclusion obviously should summarize your main points, provide recommendations or insights, and encourage the readers to share their thoughts or feedback. We really do love that engagement, the give and take, the dialogue that it creates. And then finally, with this outline in hand, you have a really strong foundation and it's time to start writing your blog post. You can follow you know, lots of different tutorials and books about best practices for writing effective blog posts. Uh, but my advice is keep your paragraphs short. Um, long blocks of text uh, can be difficult to read. You know, they sort of exhaust the eye and you might lose your reader's attention. You can use subheadings, you can use bullet points, um, anything that you can use to make the content organizational layout flow more easily for the reader. Also, keep in mind the tone. Tone goes a long way with blogs. And I have clients who ask me from time to time about whether or not they could use AI to assist them in the creation of articles for blog posts or videos or podcasts, etc. You certainly can. Um, you could go on to ChatGPT or any of the AI programs and ask it to help you outline your topic. And then you need to go back and remove the bits that aren't applicable. You need to enhance those pieces that really are what you think your reader wants to, to read. And then change the tone. Change the tone so that it is not only appropriate for the reader, but also a tone that's authentic to you and your personality and your practice brand. Excuse me, you wanna use um, active voice for example, to emphasize the subject of your sentences um, and make your writing more dynamic. Um, ChatGPT or any of the other AI programs are pretty good at this, but you definitely need to go back through anything that an AI uh, generator creates for you and make it your own. And then the last thing that I want to mention about any blog post is storytelling. And storytelling is one of the most powerful ways that we can get our messages heard, our blog posts read, our videos watched. It's the one of the best ways we can get engagement with our audience. And storytelling as mediators and arbitrators really is in our wheelhouse. We should take advantage of that. Mediators know firsthand how effective storytelling is. And a well-told story for entertainment or information um, or you know whatever it is that you are trying to put forward in your article really does create an emotional connection between you, the storyteller, and the listener or the reader or the viewer. And stories, they're just one of the best ways to, to experience something without actually having to experience it firsthand. That's why they're so valuable. And as professional mediators and arbitrators, we know that when we tell a story well, it lowers the defenses of the listener. The same is true when resolutionists use any medium, not just blogging. Um, but it is really part of the art of our industry. Take advantage of that. Um, so think about storytelling. I did write a long 
full article blog post about storytelling with all of the necessary components to telling a great story. Even if the story you're telling is simply for educational purposes, uh, it could be, again, it could be in, informative, it could be entertainment, it could be lots of things, but giving all of those points, all of your experience in story form keeps the viewer, keeps the reader engaged, and that's really key. So, of course, you don't always need to tell a story. You can, you know, just list out the bullet points. You can just quote uh, new case law. You can just write your, your, you know, information there. But I will put the link to the storytelling article in the comments below. Feel free to look at that and then utilize that format for your articles, for your blogs. And Rick, yes, I too love storytelling. All right. So I hope that today's very short Marketing Monday has helped you gain some insight about what to do once you've established that you want to have a blog post. Uh, you, again, you can use blogs, you can use vlogs, video blogging, uh, or you can use it for a podcast. But creating blogs in story form, having, uh, you know, a really good outline will help you to engage your audience. And that's what it's all about, creating that trust, creating that relationship. There you go. I hope that uh, today's video has helped you out in some way. Hope that you enjoy your coffee and that you get your week started off right. As always, if you have any questions, any concerns, any ideas, um, anything at all that you want me to address in future Marketing Mondays, drop me a line, let me know, pick up the phone, send an email, whatever you're comfortable with, and I'll put together a video just for you. That's it for me, Natalie Armstrong-Moton with Marketing Resolution. Be good humans. Bye-bye.